Good morning. This is the day that the Lord hath made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. What a beautiful day to be able to wake up and to be refreshed from rest, and your thoughts fall right upon the God who has kept you, who is keeping you, and who has given you life. The psalmist says to us in Psalm number 67, God, be merciful to us and bless us, 
and cause his face to shine upon us. That your way may be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. Let the people praise you, O God. Let all the people praise you. Oh, let the nations be glad and sing with joy, for you shall judge the people righteously and govern the nations on earth. Let the people praise you, O God. Let all the people praise you. Then the earth shall yield her increase. God, our own God, shall bless us. God shall bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall feel him. Let us pray. God, we are so grateful for another day that we have in your presence. We're so grateful for another day that we're able to come together in your name. We're so grateful, Lord, that you've given us life again and you brought us to this place where we pause in our existence to give you praise, to give you glory, to give you honor, and just to share love with you that came directly from you. We come to you in the name of Jesus today, thanking you, Lord, that we're just mere humans and mere people that have come before you, but you have loved us with a love that is so great that you provided salvation for us. We thank you, Lord, that, that within that salvation, Lord, that there's forgiveness of sin. And so we come to you confessing to you that we've all sinned and fallen short of your glory. But we thank you, Lord, that even while we were yet sinners, your son Jesus died for us, that we may have a relationship with you that is just and that is right. And for that, we're grateful. And we come this morning to praise you, Father, because we can come before you and be thankful for all that you have provided. Thankful for another opportunity to worship you. Thank you, Lord, that you've given us a breath of life. You, get, you provided for us health and for our well-beings and and you have just been our God. We come in the name of Jesus today, Lord, and we lift up before you this body of people that have come together to worship you in spirit and in truth. Within that body, Lord, there are desires. Within that Lord, body, Lord, there are needs, Lord. Within that body, Lord, we have a need for a touch from you. We need your healing. We need your uh, encouragement. We need the success that only comes from you. We need, Father, that you would touch this morning in a way that only you can. And so we come in the name of Jesus this morning, thanking you for your comfort, thanking you for the faith that you've given us, Lord, to know that even beyond our circumstances, all is all right. And Father, we will continue to worship you we will continue to call upon your name. We will continue to love you and one another until that day you're able to call us to yourself. So Lord, bless this worship today as we go forward. Bless us, Lord, and keep us in, and use us in these few moments that we may be of encouragement to one another. Somebody may be saved. Somebody may be healed. Some life may be changed. And for that, we give you praise, glory, and honor now. In Jesus' name, as we go forward, lead Holy Spirit, guide Holy Spirit, thanking you. In Jesus' name, amen. We will now have uh, another musical selection. Good morning. I'm going to sing a couple of songs, like the uh, people's spirituals. Uh, a short medley, and we're going to give you an opportunity to help us sing these songs. I'm going to start with every time I feel the spirit and then move into study one or more.
Thank you, young folks, for reminding us that we don't have to study war no more. We can lay our burdens down. We welcome you this morning to our service today as we come together virtually to worship and praise the one true God. There is a lot going on in our world and in our individual lives of several of our members, but we must continue to lean and depend on God as we worship and praise his holy name. Our virtual prayer meeting and Bible study is continuing to be held at noon and seven on Wednesdays. And we ask that you would join us for our weekly Bible study on Zoom. Attendance for the day Bible study seems to have decreased. Remember to still take time to study God's word, even though our society is opening up. It is really important for Christians to study the word of God and grow in their knowledge of the word. Uh, church on Sunday is good, but you need additional study. Our leadership training and our monthly prayer meeting of the leadership will be Saturday, March 6th. And it will be at noon. All ministry leaders and officers are expected to participate. On Sunday, uh, March the 7th, if we do not usually attend Sunday school, but are interested in starting, please contact Sister Barbara Knapper at 714-870-6444 for the Sunday school books for the upcoming quarter. Uh, and at 11 o'clock next Sunday, we will also have our virtual communion service. We had an awesome virtual 46th church anniversary and homecoming service last week. A big thank you first uh, to God for keeping us 46 years. We also thank the committee that planned the celebration and those who attended the services. COVID-19 has slowed us down, but it has not stopped us. Lent started on Ash Wednesday. And will you consider giving up something for Lent? Jesus gave up his life. Let us all consider sacrificing one thing over the next few weeks of Lent, which will end on the sunset of Holy Thursday, April 1st, the, the, the day before Good Friday. Our word of encouragement for today is found in the book of 2 Peter, chapter 1, verse 5 through 8. The New Living Translation says, Make every effort to respond to God's promises. Supplement your faith with a generous portion of moral excellence, and moral excellence with knowledge, and knowledge with self-control, and self-control with patient endurance, and patient endurance with, with godliness, and godliness with brotherly affection, and brotherly affection with love for everyone. The more you grow like this, the more productive and useful you will be in your knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Recordings of these services are available to you on YouTube, uh, on the New Spirit Baptist Church channel of Santa Ana, California. And I'm asking that you remember to fast for one meal each week and pray for an hour each week for our church and pray for those on the prayer list. Please also pray for all those affected by natural and man-made disasters in the COVID-19 pandemic, as well as the current racial and political tensions in our country. And we would like to give God praise and thanks for another opportunity just to continue to serve him. We uh, have a few uh, birthdays this week, this month, and we also have some um, uh, what another verse? But there are two birthdays that's come today, and we have to pause and and thank God and to acknowledge these birthdays because they only have a birthday every four years, and that's Francine Harris and Aisha Robinson. Robinson, both of them have birthdays today, and they age so slow, y'all. They only age every four years. They have a birthday. But we want to give God praise for them, and we want to wish them a happy birthday. And um, so tomorrow is a day that is uh, not promised to us. So we're going to celebrate them today. Amen. We're going to now move into our Black History portion of the program. And we have two 
uh, persons today that's going to share with us one historical and one living history. First, give an honor to God, I'm the Pastor Clark. Thank you, Sister Clark, for allowing me to speak today. Good morning, church. What is Black History Month? Black History Month is a federally recognized celebration, national celebration, that calls on all Americans to reflect on the significant roles that African Americans have played in shaping U.S. history. I heard a lot of black speeches over the years and I always wondered who started black history. Well, Carter G. Woodson, an African-American historian, wrote black Americans into U.S. history. Carter G. Woodson considered a pioneer in the study of African-American history. He is given much of the credit for Black History Month. The son of four former slaves, Woodson spent his childhood working in coal mines and quarries. He received his education during a four-month term that was customary for black schools at that time. At 19, having taught himself English fundamentals and arithmetic, Woodson entered high school, where he completed a four-year curriculum in two years. He went on to earn his master's degree in history from the University of Chicago, and later earned his doctorate from Harvard. Disturbed that history textbooks largely ignored America's black population, Woodson took on the challenge of writing black Americans into the nation's history. To do this, he established the Association for the Study of Negro Life and History. He also founded the group widely respected publication, the Journal of Negro History. In 1926, Woodson developed Negro History Week. He believed the achievement of the Negro properly set forth will crown him a factor in early human progress and a maker of modern civilization. Why was February picked for Black History Month? Well, Woodson chose the second week of February for his celebration because it marked the birthdays of two men who greatly influenced the black American population. First, Frederick Douglass, who escaped slavery and became an abolitionist in civil, and a civil rights leader. Though his birthday isn't known, he celebrated it on February 14th. Second, Abraham Lincoln, who signed the Emancipation Proclamation, which abolished slavery and America's Confederate States. He was born on February the 12th. For Woodson hard work, he had been called the father of black history. And with that church, the rest is history. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Francine Joyce Harris. I am going to give you a little bit about my background when I came to Santa Ana, California. I came to Santa Ana, California in September the 21st, 1963, from Alcoa, Pennsylvania, with my daughter. I got involved doing volunteer work, starting off with being on the PTA at Monta Vista Elementary School. Later, I got involved with talking to the children about they to stay in school and that they are somebody. I have talked it also to the young kids and their teens that were on drugs and let them know to get back in school and let them know that they are somebody. Some of them went back to school Later on in the years, I've seen them, and Grandmama, do you remember me? No, I don't. Well, you told me that if I did not get back in school, that you were going to go upside my head. Some of them now, they have their own business. Yes, I even took care of foster children here in Santa Ana. I enjoyed that. Then I started working with the seniors in this community, all doing volunteer. 
every time I walked and seen the homeless, I started going down on Ross Street, talking with the homeless, reading the Bible, having prayer. It made me feel so good when some of them came off the street and accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Yes, I am on the Santa Ana Senior Advisory Board for the City of Santa Ana. Also, I'm the chairperson. I am the president of the Santa Ana Senior Club which every third Saturday of the month we meet up. But in November, I have a pre-Thanksgiving luncheon where we take and we honor the young and the old with, and honor them with certificates and awards for what they have done for their community. Six years ago, Every October the 1st, the Santa Ana Senior Club and the Downtown Associate, we have what we call the Older Adult Affair for the community on Birch Park in Santa Ana. Yes, I have received it awards, proclamation, I accepted for May to be Older American Month here in Santa Ana. I would like to take time now to thank a few people about four years ago that came aboard with me to help me where I were doing all the cooking but which was fine because I love to cook. But I would like to thank Roberta for doing the cooking for me. I would like to thank Valerie for coming, volunteering, helping to serve the people at the Santa Ana Senior Center. I would like to take time to thank Tommy and Carol Grant. I thank them Tommy for coming and taking photos of the affairs. I thank him for when he came to Fullerton College and took pictures of me, which uh, they made me the woman of the year, Washington, D.C. I thank him for coming down to City Hall, taking pictures of me why I accepted these awards. So I'm going to say thank you, God bless you, God keep you, and ride on King Jesus. Ride on. I like that, y'all.
amen then. Thank you, Tommy, for that history of Black history. And thank you, Francine, for sharing with us in your continued effort to make history on an ongoing basis. We're blessed to have such talented and, and, uh, and people, uh, people that volunteer their time, their energy, and their efforts to make sure that the lives of others are enhanced and encouraged and just enjoyed. And so we're grateful for, for Francine Harris. And we want to, again, uh, give you a birthday shout out today. I know you're one quarter of your age. And so we give God praise and thanks for you. We're now going to have another song selection.
Pride and a happy Black History Month to each and every one of you. Uh, we thank God for such a rich history of our people. We thank God that we're finally able to celebrate it without any interruptions. And I want to thank uh, everybody for sharing from their hearts today and sharing the history. Thank you, Tommy, and thank you, uh, Mrs. Harris, for sharing from your hearts today. And so we want all much long, we want to thank everybody that uh, reached down in the recesses of their hearts and their minds and shared uh, personal experiences as well as shared historical experiences. So thank you, all of you for making this Black History Month uh, a success. It's now time for the Word of God. If you have your Bibles, if you will, turn with me to Joshua chapter 14. And uh, I'm not going to read all of this, but it starts at verse number six. Joshua chapter 14, verse six. And actually, we're going to be looking at two passages today. That's in Numbers chapter 13, verse 27 through 33. And uh, Joshua chapter 14, verses six through the end of the chapter. The word says, and the children of Judah came to Joshua in Gilgal, and Caleb the son of Jephunneh, and the uh, Kinzite said to him, you know the word which the Lord said to Moses, the man of God, concerning you and me in Kadesh Barnea. I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land, and I brought back word to him as it was in my heart. Nevertheless, my brethren who went up with me made the heart of the people melt. But I wholly followed the Lord my God. So Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land where your foot has trodden shall be your inheritance and your children's forever, because you have wholly followed the Lord my God. And now behold the Lord has kept me alive, as he said these 45 years, ever since the Lord spoke this word to Moses, while Israel wandered in the wilderness, and now here I am this day, 85 years old, as yet, I am as strong this day as on the day that Moses sent me. But as my strength was then, so now is my strength for war, both for the going out and for the coming in. Now, therefore, give me this mountain of which the Lord spoke in that day. For you heard in that day how the An Anakin were there and that the cities were great and fortified. It may be that the Lord will be with me and I shall be able to drive them out as the Lord said. And Joshua blessed him and gave Hebron to Caleb, the uh, son of Jephunneh, uh, as an inheritance. Hebron uh, therefore became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenzazite, and to this day, because he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel, and the name of Hebron formerly was uh, uh, Kirjath Arba. Arba was the great greatest man among the Anakins. Then the land had rest from war. I'd like to talk to you for just a few minutes uh, from the topic of conquering giants, conquering giants. And if you notice throughout the passage that I read, there are a few times that Josh, I mean, uh, that Caleb referred to holy following the Lord. Holy, W-H-O-L-L-Y, following the Lord. He didn't let anything get between what God revealed to him and what was before him, he put, he put those two together 
and he believed God, conquering giants. Each and every one of us have some things in our lives or some people in our lives or some situations in our lives that we consider gigantic, that we consider that they are too big for us to handle. And you, perhaps you are right. Every one of us have some giants in our lives. But I pray that as we look at the giants in our lives, that we also look at a man of God who recognized that there were giants, but he recognized that God had given him the ability to conquer giants. And I'm here today be, to say to us in this time of pandemic, in this time where things are, seem to be uh, greater than we are able to handle, that we are in a position today, even where our circumstances are beyond our control, they may appear to be as giants in our lives. The same God who literally spoke to Moses, who spoke to Caleb, is the same God who speaks to our hearts today. And if we listen and if we wholly follow after God, then we too can conquer our giants. In our lesson today, the setting of this sermon is on the verge of a promise. God had promised Moses he was going to lead him and the children of Israel to the promised land. And Moses had led the children to the edge of the promised land. They had been delivered from slavery in Egypt, and manna from heaven had been provided for them as their food. Uh, water had flowed from a rock to quench their thirst. And they literally sent out scouts uh, to explore the land and evaluate the strength of the inhabitants. Instead of them coming back with a report that the Lord is with us and we can take this land, there were 12 spies that were sent out, but 10 came back and said, oh my God, look at the size of those people. Oh my God, look at how fortified those cities are. Oh, we are just as grasshoppers before them. But there were two more that came, two other spies that came back and said, uh, the Lord is with us and we are able to take this city. That was Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh. Uh, they were among the 12 scouts. But Caleb uh, is not concerned with the size or the ability of the Anakims. Caleb's concern was the word of God had been given and we are able to do anything that is necessary simply because God had spoken it. And I'm saying that to you today as we are confronted with all kinds of situations before us. We are who God says we are. We can do what God says we can do. We are the beloved. We are the people who, who said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. We have the ability, not because of the strength and the endurance of our, on our own, but we have the God of God and the God of this universe who literally resides within us to equip us to be able to conquer the giants that comes against us. The results of the scout mission was mixed. As I said earlier, 10 came back and they were equivalent in their, shoes, in, their, in their shoes. Two came back and they found, first of all, they found that the land to be good. It was truly the land of milk and honey. And the 10 spies, they feared the Canaanites because of their number and because of their size. But Caleb and Joshua advised their people to proceed and to conquer Canaan. Uh, faint hearts prevailed and Israel wandered in the desert for 40 years. Now let's fast forward for 40 years because that's where we wanna to look today. We wanna to look uh, 45 years later at, uh, as they were preparing to enter the land and each tribe must conquer the portion assigned to it. 
But Joshua asked Caleb which part of Canaan he desires for his soul and for his own. And Caleb wanted the part that God had promised to him and that Moses had promised to him. As we look at this service, this, this sermon today, Conquering Giants, there are three things I want to talk to you just in just a few minutes. And first of all, the super senior citizen goes against giants. And we find that in Joshua 14, verses 6 through 12. Now, here he is old, but he is still ready to fight against giants. Number two, where would this super senior get his strength? He got his strength from God. Number three, where can we get enough strength to conquer our giants? Let's look back at Joshua 14. The super senior citizen goes against giants. Caleb at age 85 wants to fight a giant. Now, you know, most of us, as we get older, when we find ourselves reaching the senior years, we're thinking retirement. We're thinking turning in our badge. We're thinking uh, it's time for somebody else to move forward. But at age 85, Caleb is saying, I'm just as strong as I am today that I was 45 years ago. And Caleb's response to Joshua was, give me this mountain. In some translation, it says, give me my mountain. It has already been promised to me, and I want what God has promised to, you, to me. The question for us today is that, do we want it bad enough what God has promised to us? Has God made a promise to you that are unfulfilled? And you have already decided because of your age that, well, maybe I missed it. I'm here to tell you today, even though it might seem like giant proportions before you, but God has not changed. He's a God. He changes not. And God has the promises that he made for you still ready to be provided for you. We need to learn a lesson from Caleb this morning, and that is that what God promised us years ago is still before us. I, even myself, sometimes I have to think about, well, you know, some promises God has made to me and they haven't happened and they don't seem to be happening. And sometimes I just want to say, well, you know, I just missed the boat. And then God comes back through his word and through his spirit to encourage me to know that he is still in the promise keeping business. God will keep his promise. And Caleb is saying that I wholly believe God. And because I believe God, and I'm ready to receive from God those things that God has promised to me. We all have giants to conquer in our lives. First of all, we have that giant called fear. It's the opposite of faith. We hear Paul telling us in, 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 in 2 Timothy, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. In Hebrews 11, 23 through 27, uh, uh, the writer says, by faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months in, of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. The king's commandment with any child under two years old was to be slain. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God rather than enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater than the treasures of Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith he forsook Israel, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Moses realized that in terms of what the king had literally decreed, his life could have literally been, literally been snatched even as an infant. But every day he lived, even in the presence of the household of the king's daughter, he found himself coming to a place to realize who he was. 
and refusing Egypt because his faith was in God, which was greater than the king's command. So Moses here, he did not allow fear to rule his life. And somebody today, and, and sometimes I, myself included, fear robs us of the promises that God has made for us. And so when we're able to conquer fear, and again, we say God didn't give us a spirit of fear. Now there's some fear that is healthy, but there's also fear that is unhealthy. He didn't give us the spirit of fear. He gave us the spirit of love, the spirit of power, and the spirit of a sound mind. So we make sound decisions in the name of the Lord. We also have this giant called worry. Uh, and it's a, it's a worthless word. And Philippians 4, verse 6 three, eight, through 8, we find these words, be careful for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good report, and whatsoever things, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Yes, we are confronted in life with all kinds of things that are unknown to us at times, and we really don't know the outcome from the beginning, but we don't have to worry when we can literally lift those things up in prayer before God and trust him with them because God will lead us in a way and in a manner that will lead us to a place that even while the circumstances are, are tumultuous, yet he grants us his peace. And that's why he says in verse seven, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall guard your heart. God's peace will guard your heart from worry if you put your trust and hope in him. And while everything is going on, you don't have to think negatively. You can think as God would have us to think. And what? Is it true? Is it honest? Is it just? Is it pure? Lovely? Is it a good report? If there be any virtue in these things, then think on these things. You can, God will grant you the ability to think great thoughts and good thoughts if you put your soul trust in him when the unknown is before. You don't have to worry when you got God on your side who is there to care for you and to fulfill his promises towards you. Thirdly, not only do we have a giant of fear, and the giant of worry, but we have that giant called anger. And it's a destroyer of the futures. In Ephesians 4, 30 through 31, he says, and grieve not the Holy Spirit, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. God has given us his Holy Spirit and his Holy Spirit keeps us and has sealed us until Jesus will return and possess us for himself. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. Don't allow anger at another. Don't allow anger at your situations. Don't allow anger to govern your life. He says you don't have to let all this bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking. No, no, no. He already told you in Philippians to think on these things, the true things, the honest things, the things of good report, the pure things. That's what you need to think about. You don't need to be walking around with this poison of anger in your life. Some people's lives are thwarted. Some people's lives are literally being challenged because they walk around angry at being alive. 
God says to us, we need to be kind to one another and tenderhearted, realizing that we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And not only, and we all need forgiveness. We all need mercy. We all need grace. And we might be just blessed to be the givers of it. But you can be a grace giver or you can hang on to your hurt, your pain, and your anger. And it can literally destroy you as well as your relationships. But not only do we have the giant called uh, worry, the, the giant called anger, and the giant called fear, but we also have that giant called temptation. Every one of us suffer with this temptation. And temptation is the destroyer of our success. But Paul says to us in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, there hath no temptation taken you, but such as common to man. You are not the only one being tempted. Every man that walketh the face of the earth has been tempted one way or the other. But God is faithful. Even when you're tempted, God does not leave you. He's there. He will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. But with the temptation, also make a way of escape that you may able to be able to bear under it. God is the kind of God that if we rely upon him, even in the times of temptation, he will show us a way of escape simply because temptation was not given by him and not sent by him. Temptation really is the opportunity for us to prove to ourselves and to prove to God that we're following after him. And if we, and when we are tempted, if we choose to follow after God, then God would take the temptation and make a way of escape for you and for I. We have some giants in our lives. The giant of worry, the giant of fear, the giant of our anger, and the giant of temptation. But God has already provided for those giants. And the only thing that we need to do is cooperate. And we go back to Caleb. Caleb refused to tremble before these formidable enemies. These people were larger than, they were bigger than, they were more than, and they had uh, and, and they had fortified cities, and it looked as if Israel was just uh, grasshoppers. That's what the ten spies, when they saw themselves as grasshoppers in the sight of the Anakin, they literally acted like grasshoppers. My question for you and me today is that do we see ourselves as grasshoppers as we face the giants in our lives? Or do we see ourselves standing on the word of God as Caleb did? And even though the people decided to go another way, Caleb still believed God. Even 45 years later, he says, I'm ready to go and get my reward. You can be a giant killer too. If, in fact, that you stand on the promises of God, he was expected to conquer all these giants, and yet some saw him as a grasshopper. He knew he had the power to win. Do you know that you have the power to win? Now, this super, this super senior citizen, he goes against the giants, but where did he get his strength from? His strength came from God. And lastly, where we can get strength from enough to conquer our giants. First of all, Jesus conquered our enemy at the cross. When Jesus got ready to die on Calvary's cross, simply before he died, he says, it is finished. In other words, everything was in place for him to empower you in the days ahead that even were to come that you will be able to conquer your giants. God has already conquered our giants through the blood of Jesus that dripped from Calvary's cross. God has already conquered our giants through the resurrection of Jesus from the grave. Let us know that anything that can beat us up and blood us up, yet it cannot hold us down because Jesus was resurrected, that we may be empowered to conquer our, our giants. God is bigger than all our fears and all of our temptation. And because God is bigger than all our fears and temptation, then we can live a life 
that is not fearful of our giants. Victory awaits all who completely surrender to him. God is not looking for anybody to fight for him. He's looking for people who will surrender to him and let him appropriate what he has already done at Calvary's cross. We see a super senior citizen. He goes against the giants. The giants doesn't scare him. As a matter of fact, he's encouraged to go forth even though the giants are greater than, more than, and look like they can take him. The super senior citizen conquer his giants because he recognizes that his strength comes from God. And the benefit that we have on this side of the cross is that we recognize that Jesus has already died and has been resurrected to conquer the giants in our lives. We're grateful today. And I'm here to say to, to all of us as we get ready to close that there's nothing too hard for God. And God is available for the soul, for the heart that will absolutely surrender to him so that all that he has appropriated for us can be fulfilled in our lives. You can conquer your giants because God has already handled your giants. Caleb went into a land. Joshua went into a land. And they saw every aspect of the people was greater than they were. But they had something that people didn't have. They had the word of God. And they had the presence of God. Can we say the same about you and I? And when they place their faith in the word of God and in the presence of God, they were willing and ready to conquer giants. And that's what we need to do today. Place our whole confidence and faith. Surrender to God. Get it out of your hand. Put it back in his hand. And let him lead you and guide you to a place of not only surrender, but to a place of victory as he fight to remove the giants in your life. Our conquering king leads us to our victory. Who will submit to the conquering one today? Is there anybody today that will come to the place in their lives that will say, I'm tired of fighting this fight. I'm tired of trying to win it on my own but lord you said in your word that you will literally go before us you would literally hold us up in the time of battle and if you if that's you and you know you need the help of the lord all you have to do is ask for it ask him to come in your life Ask him to take control of your life. Surrender your life to him. And God himself will lead you through the battle to victory. Notice I say through the battle. A lot of people think that just because they put their faith in God, because they put their belief in God, that everything is going to be easy. No, he leads us through the battle. But he leads us to the victory that is provided by the death, the burial, and the resurrection of his son, Jesus Christ. For as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons and daughters of God. You don't have to worry about your fear. You don't have to worry about your worry. You don't have to worry about your anger. You don't even have to worry about temptation. You just need to confess your need for Christ. And he himself will grant you victory that is eternal in nature. If that's you, please give us a call at 
543-4746. And let us know about the decision that you've made because we like to encourage you uh, to grow in Christ and to become more Christ-like in your existence. Give us a call, if you will. So we want to close on. In prayer, we want to talk. We want to pray for our sick. We want to pray for our shut-in. There are a number of people that um, uh, all of us are shut in to a certain degree, but there are those who cannot come out even uh, before the pandemic hit. I want to pray for the Coleman's today. I want to pray for the Junies today. I want to pray for the Sister Neil today. I want to pray for Olive Clark. I want to pray for uh, Audrey da Costa. We want to pray for a Celeste Brandt. We want to pray for uh, uh, Steve Richards. Uh, there, there, there are many more. I have a brother who's on life support now in uh, North Carolina. And it's James Ford Jr. And we want to pray for Jim James and his family. And uh, so there are just many people that are going through today and we want to seek the favor of God, seek the healing power of God to enhance people's lives. So Father, we just come before you to thank you for the privilege that you've given us to worship you today in spirit and in truth. And we come today in these names that have called and we know that there are others, Lord, that we uh, probably did not call, but they are convalescing, Lord, and they need you. Brother Raymond Bird and Deacon uh, Virtus Allen and Sister Rose Chapman and Sister Betty Lane. And, and there, are, there are many others, Father, who are in need of a touch from you today. And so we lift up Pat Smith to you. We lift up Betty Smith to you. We, and they're just names, Father, that keeps coming in. We know that you are the God who heals. You are the God who raises up, Lord. You are the God who extends to us your favor. And we ask, Father, that you will extend your favor to these and others that we haven't called their name, Lord, but you know the need of their lives, that you would be encouragement today, that you would be help today, that you would be the healer today, Lord, that you would be the deliverer today, Lord. You'd be the comforter today, Lord. And we ask it in the name of Jesus that you would just be with us and be with them in such a way that they get everything that is suitable for children of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Touch their lives in unique and special ways today. And for that, we will give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, and to present you faultless before a throne with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be dominion, majesty, and power, both now and forever. And the people of God said, Amen. Today is also another milestone in our congregation. That is Sister Brother Virtus Allen and Sister Ann Allen is celebrating 55 years of wedding bliss. They've been married for 55 years and we want to give God praise and thanks for their marriage. And I want to give God thanks and praise for each and every one of you that have taken out time today to worship with us and to worship in spirit and truth. Know that God has made you a conqueror of giants because of his presence in your life. You are a conqueror. You're more than a conqueror because of Christ Jesus in your life. Amen. God bless you. I love you with the love of my Lord and there's nothing you can do about it.